Good afternoon, Grace and Peace Thunder Ministries International, Apostle Angela Stewart, and everyone under the sound of my voice. My name is Evangelist Melody. First, I would like to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is first in my life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer, giving praise and thanksgiving, Lord God, for all the wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon me this far and those that are yet to come. Lord God, I would like to ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Forgiveness for allowing the devil to attack my self-confidence and self-worth. Lord, the enemy has been using the guilt of my past against me. When I was being told that I wouldn't be nothing, nobody was going to want me, I didn't deserve to be happy, and most importantly, that it was a lie that God called me to preach. In your word, Father God, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 states, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who have enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me in ministry. Before I go on with this fervent prayer, amen, let us pray. All wise and eternal Father, I ask that you remove me out of the way so that your Holy Spirit can come forth to bring a word for your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The title of my sermon is, He Loves Me. I have two scriptures that I will be reading. The first one comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 in the NIV version. We love because he first loved us. And the second one is from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 in the Message Bible. Keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before the generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Amen. Dear God, while I was in my valley experience just recently, Father God, I allowed someone, as my sister put it, and I quote, I am sorry to tell you this, but you are allowing that person to abuse you. You have worked so hard on yourself, and now you are allowing them to abuse you. Close quote. I brought this to you before, I brought this before you in prayer, and you revealed to me that that was the case. I immediately had a breakthrough. Because prior to that, I was sad, depressed, melancholy, and just out of sorts. I knew something was wrong. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Amen. But glory to God. Amen. Psalms 23 verse 4 lets me know, even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil for your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Lord God, there is this gospel singer named Titus Showers, and he has a song titled, It's Gonna Be All Right. He reminds me through the lyrics in the song that it's gonna be all right. I can also find comfort in your words in Pro Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. To trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Father God, I had gone through so many trials and tribulations, Lord God, that it was like the poem, Footprints in the Sand. The author, Mary Stevenson, wrote the poem in her early teens during the Great Depression. She was inspired by the many things that had affected her young life. The poem reads, One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. 
For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one belonging to the Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. You said, once I decided to follow you, you will walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever during your trials and testing. When you saw one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord God, if I may apply a scripture to support the poem, Lord God, it will be John chapter 3, verse 16. Amen. Coming from the New Living Translation Bible. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting, have eternal life. Amen. Lord God, I would like to take this time to give honor to your unselfish sacrifice of the death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Lord God, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, and it states, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Lord God, I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Amen. Father God, please forgive me for taking your love for granted. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, expresses it like this. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You know, God, I didn't like the person I was before I invited you into my life. I remember being in my room one morning, looking in the mirror. I didn't like the person that was staring back at me. I cried out to you, Lord, please help me. Save me from myself, God. The lyrics on the, in the song goes on to say, I was once lost in sin. Your grace came and took me in, gave me a rest in place. Thank you for amazing grace. Amen. Lord God, I appreciate those lyrics because I needed a place to rest. Can anyone relate that you were once your own worst enemy? Father God, before I knew you, the trials and tribulations I had gone through had me beating myself up so bad that it was a toss-up between who was winning the battle, me or the enemy. Glory to God and your word, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29, lets me know that it's okay to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. 
Father God, for those who don't know, the enemy has a name, and his name is Satan. Wikipedia's definition of Satan, also known as the devil, is an entity in the Abrahamic religions that seduces humans into sin or falsehood. Father God, you know I was so deep in sin that it felt like I had my own enemy assigned to me. But just like I felt like I had my own enemy, glory to God, I had my own angels assigned to me as well. Amen. Thank you, God. Father God, I just want you to know that I feel better now that I talk to you. I feel so good that I just want to shout off the rooftop. If you can do it for me, then you could do it for anyone. Your love is free. Oh God, before I forget, Lord God, I want to pray for those who have been affected by the coronavirus, whether it be they had it, someone they know had it, someone they know has died from it, or if they have been affected spiritually, physically, mentally, and financially. Lord God, this virus has plagued our country. I just want to ask that you would rain down your healing powers on us, Lord God. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, which I like to call the spiritual warfare scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father God, I stand in the gap for intercessory prayer that you will heal our land. Amen. Lord God, I'm ready for bed now, but before I go, Lord, I would like to close out with the final lyrics to the song. Amen. Sometimes I have to remind myself, he loves me no matter what I've done. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Isn't that good to know he still loves you? He can work it out for you because he loves you. He loves me. Oh, he loves me. When I was lonely and it seemed like nobody cares, he loves me. Every day, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. It's going to be all right. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray to the Lord my soul to take. God bless my family and friends, and God bless the whole wide world, including me. Amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed.